Well, I'm back. I'm back. I didn't realize uh, the internet went out. I normally have to run a cord, uh, the Ethernet cable, just in case the uh, Wi-Fi went out, uh, goes out every once in a while, um, because the uh, the Wi-Fi itself is on the other side of our our gallery, and so my office is all the way on the other side, and so we have an extender. But um, I, when I do this show. What I like to do is run an Ethernet cable so it doesn't happen, but for whatever reason, probably because it was just too early in the morning, <laughs> uh, it slipped my mind and um, and uh, the Internet paused for a second. And when that does that, it, it, it cuts that live stream. And so uh, I'll, I'll make sure that doesn't happen again. But to make up for that I'm doing a second video here which is part two which is basically the end of that video that was cut so here is Mark's painting and we've already went through about and talked about the thrust maps and that kind of stuff and now what I want to do is just uh, offer up a suggestion in terms of how we can add some extra animation some extra life into this painting Okay, and the way we would do that is through movement. Now, what we were saying in the end of the other video was the fact that if we come in here and we bring in a sweeping motion, a sweeping thrust, a gesture from the from the space between the head of the woman and the top of the head of the horse, so that it pulls, it pulls our eye in this motion. And as it comes over here, then our eye then is caught by the arc of this, of the butt of the um, horse. And it's dragged down through the tail into the vegetation, the flowers down here. And what that's going to do, it's going to create a swaying of that tail, right? That the tail's going to feel like it's swaying or swinging, swaying. And then the head of the horse is going to feel like it's bobbing and being pulled in the other direction. So you're going to have the front of the horse moving to the left and you're going to have the back of the horse moving to the right and as your eye continues to move through this painting it'll keep having that flow and it'll make it feel like the horse is actually in motion um, and it'll make the tail feel like it's actually swaying and that there's actually like uh, a hip movement in the horse because your eyes are continu continuing past the form and basically into what we'll call the influence, okay? Its vibration is, is radiating out, uh, and specifically the head movement and the tail movement in opposite directions. So here's an example from an artist that we, we reviewed uh, a few days ago. But you can see how they have these leaves falling and how they came in with this curve, and they and it hoop it, it swoops through, comes back, and then goes in the opposite direction. And when you look at it without my lines over top of it, you can actually begin to feel the falling of those leaves. And I like how it's a small burst of like almost a small circle into a, a, another small circle, and then it's a longer circle, but it come comes down the other direction. Now. They have some pots and stuff and broken things down here, but uh, that's those aren't leaves, but they do actually help you feel that movement. Look at the way the bricks are laid. The bricks are laid in such a way that it actually helps move your eye down to the feet. So you feel that of the leaf falling. And so that's the same principle here. We're going to move the head to the one side, and then we're going to sway it back through the tail and the bush um, and the uh, flowers, and that way it'll give us the bobbing or the swaying of this horse as it's moving through this uh, field. And here is, with the modifications, if you look at the head of the horse, you can begin to see how your head, your eye, and allow your head to actually move with your eye. So if your eye is moving gently to the... Um, uh, left, then, then allow your body or your uh, your head to actually move with the eye, and then as it comes back down through the tail and the uh, flowers, allow your head to move with that in, in a in a really kind of 
allow you to rock it back and forth. What's also neat with this is that when you're looking at the tail, it feels like the tail is moving to the right, and then as you come back up and it and the tail goes out of your line of sight and your eye starts to come to the other side, you'll actually feel that the tail is moving to the left. And so there's like a hip sh uh, shift in the horse as, as your eye moves through it once you add these little nuances. So here is the, um, the modified version. You can see that the background is a little sloped um, where the original is higher and so therefore it, it creates more of um, uh, it adds more of a staticness to it now maybe that's part of what uh, Mark wants in the image in, in, in the sense that it's a quiet still maybe morning um, and, and everything is just still and if that's the case then this then that works um, now if the horse is moving through the field and he's just not standing still um, then I would just add just a little bit of a movement. So now it, the original, what's really nice is Mark does a great job at, at making you feel space, right? You really feel that there's distance between us. There's a smaller distance between us and the, and the woman on the horse. And then from the horse to the background, there's a huge distance. But when we add a little bit of movement to it, now you feel the, 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 the air, you feel the life that's moving around them. Um, and you, when you can feel the distance and you can feel the air at the same time, it just brings you into this sense of being present in this piece. And um, like I said, it just adds an extra level of animation so that you actually begin to feel like uh, it's not just a capture moment in time, but you're actually present in many moments you know that's a take the tail is swaying that's the passage of time uh you're present in that passage of time now you're part of this moment not just this captured uh minute you know like it's, it's just not a frozen uh moment in time but you're, it's a um but it's an experience there's a middle i mean a beginning a middle and an end so that would be my suggestions for this uh piece um and uh yeah this is a lovely piece it was fun to uh, a uh animate this piece if you will and um yeah let me know what your comments are uh leave your comments in the uh in the video uh below in the comments below and remember always to share this information if you think this information is valuable to other artists then like i said earlier you're obligated you got to because why would you uh, not give a thirsty man water if he was asking you for water? And does he have to ask you for water if you know he's thirsty? So if you know this information is going to enrich the lives of your friends that are artists, enrich the lives of the collectors that you may know and the investors that you may know who invest in art, get this information out to them. Let them, you know enrich them let them be able to see art differently because i promise you anyone who comes and listens to one of my art talks on my videos will never ever see art the same way again and i say that very boldly because i've been at this thing for 25 years i've been winning in art since uh for about 35 years so it's uh, 34 i guess uh, yeah 34 years um and so when it comes to visual communication, I know I know what I'm talking about <laughs> uh, because I got the years behind me. I got the results behind me. And more importantly, I've been able to train other people and then win and have results as well. So uh, if you want to be part of the core 80, that 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 group of 80, that, that fa uh, it's not the founding group, but it's that second group, that that core group. Um, of, uh, at the academy then this is the time remember after december we shut the doors to the academy so you, so you really need to get in now and, and and there's no need to be waiting because you know if you wait 
uh, Thanksgiving is going to come along, and then Christmas is going to come along, and you're going to have holidays are going to be coming. Uh, all those things, and there, and those things add to the list of excuses, and that's what they are, excuses. And so if you want to become part of this core 80, get in now. This is the best time to get in. Get started. Why wait three more months if you've already deferred your, your dreams? Like, you know, resurrect them. If you wanted to become an artist or a profound artist, or even if you just want to learn this because you love art and you want to be able to have a much more dynamic experience with art, then get into the core 80. Start learning this information. If you're an art historian, let me tell you, if you don't know how a painting is made, if you don't know how an artist thinks, then with all due respect, keep your history lessons to yourself. I'm going to say it. You know, if I have to go sit in an art history class and listen to what the religion and the politics and the, and the economics were of the time, I don't give a shit about that. I want to know what was the artist thinking in his studio. I want to know why he made the piece. If it relates to the religion and the politics and the economics of the time, great. But I don't need to know all that crap. I don't need to know dates. I need to know why. Why did he paint it? Why did he place this in that image? Why did he do this? These are intelligent people who are making intelligent work. And I want to know why did they make these intelligent decisions? Why did they place the stuff in there? And I want to know the history on that. Not if, you know, tires existed during that time or not. And so, uh, uh, sorry, that's one of my pet peeves. <laughs> I love art historians. I just get a little irritated. The fact that it's art... We need to talk more about the art, not the history, because the art is our history. It's our heritage. Design, composition is the artist's heritage. This is our history. It's like going to somebody's house and having them look, you know, show you your family album, and you're supposed to be an expert in the family album, and you're talking about a totally different person's family. You know, you're looking at them and you're, and you're talking about, you know, cardinals and robins and eagles and finches. You're talking about birds. You're not even talking about the same species of creature. So that's how I feel a lot of times about art historians. Very knowledgeable people. But if you can't talk about art, the making of it, how it's made, then you're not even talking about the same family. So, anyways, that was my little rant. Um, thanks. Share this. Share this now. And then when you're done sharing it, go back up and watch the really, really cool video of Mark and his wife. Uh, it's a lovely little uh, uh, vignette and a lovely story. So, until next time, arrivederci. Ciao.